so I want to start by asking a couple of questions because MoodleNet has been around as an idea for some time. Um, can I just ask if you've ever heard, you know what it is, can you just raise your hand if you know what it is? And have you had any interaction with it in the past year? Keep your hand up. Okay, if you've got your hand up, thank you. If you don't, it's all new again. So I'm going to go through where we are, what's happening, and the future themes of MoodleNet as well. So this is the latest iteration of MoodleNet. The first thing I want to do is to show you who the team are. Just to give you some context of we are small but growing. So I'm going to ask, there's two members of the team in the room, so if you want to talk to us, so you know who, you are, who they are, you can see me up here. We've got Brew. Brew, stand up please. Brew's right here. Brew is our um, front-end designer. He is responsible for the look and feel of MoodleNet, um, which is often lauded as a, a very nice look and feel, the new one. Um, Brew's a mountaineer, lives in Switzerland, based over there, but he's from Barcelona, right, Brew? Um, so you can, uh, you can seek Brew out if you have any questions. Um, and then Anna. Anna is also on the team here. Anna is our education advisor. Um, what Anna does is keep us straight, talks about standards, makes sure we don't cut any corners. So Anna is there for this representation from a standards and librarian point of view. I'm Paul, I'm based in the UK, but I've been in higher education running Moodle product suite for over 15 years, a uh, techie background developer, but an educator as well. And the two guys at the bottom there, Alessandro and Ettore, sadly couldn't be here, but they are an Italian team, they're in Rome, and they're our back-end devs. So that is the MoodleNet team as it stands today. If you've known MoodleNet in the past, you will recognize only Anna and Alessandro, because they were on the previous MoodleNet teams. But Brew and I and Ettore are all new. So, we are calling the current version of MoodleNet version two, although if you've used it in the past, you'll think, why aren't they on version five? Um, really because this is the second iteration that is working. So we have released a working version. Um, you can visit it right now by scanning that QR code. You can have a look at it. It's, uh, it's, it's available right now. It's, it's only one year old. So actually we released it on the 1st of October 2021, even though it had previous iterations. And so on Saturday this week, it becomes one version two. It's open source, just like Moodle LMS and has all of the same Moodle principles of you can download it and you can install it and you can take the software and make it your own. Um, everything I'm going to talk about is av available on whether you install it yourself or you use ours. It's the same product, although we expect eventually that product to change in your hands. Um, we may not adopt everything in the central version, but you may then be able to add on things to your version. Um, and to give context, even though we're on version two, We've had 12 releases in the past year. So we have a constant release schedule. Uh, and we don't do that on a timed basis, although we are moving to that with the rest of the Moodle products team. So we will release probably every quarter going forward. So MoodleNet 2 is two things. On one side, you'll see the, the button there that says Moodle.net. This is our platform and our vision of an open education ecosystem. So this allows anybody to firstly use any resources on there anonymously. You don't need an account. You can just go, search, use. So it's totally anonymous. Now, this obviously opens up a lot of, of, uh, of users, which is great. However, there are some more advanced functionality where you need an account if you want to use it. So, and also you can install it yourself. So as we release, we also release to what's called an NPM, which I'm not going to go into. Um, but I will just do a techie bit for those non-techies in the room, close your ears. This is not PHP. This is not the same technical infrastructure as Moodle LMS. And if you want to talk to us about why, we'll do that outside this room, I think, Brew, right? Because it's quite a long discussion. This is um, built on Node.js and React and TypeScript. So it's a JavaScript product um, and an Arango database for those of you that, that know. So there you go. We can talk about that later. I don't intend to cover that today. So let's talk about looking at search. Now, those of you that I just saw scanning the QR code there, you will see, um, you see the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see a box at the top of the screen that looks like that, where you can search for any resources in the system. In the last year since we launched, just under a year, we've had 500,000 new users looking for resources, just to give you a scale. 
out there. So there are people coming to us looking for resources. It's a new system, so we're still building those resources. Um, however, we're quite impressed by those numbers of people searching. That MoodleNet design is designed to be responsive, so it should work as well on your mobile as it does on your laptop, and very fast. You don't have to wait for search results. You start to type, and the search results start to appear as you type. Am I right? Are you trying? Yeah? OK, cool. Good. Well done, Brew. Um, you can then sort these search results by relevance, by recency, or by popularity. Let's have a look a little bit about resources themselves. In order to publish a resource, to share a resource, you do need to sign up. It's a simple sign-up system to validate your email, and once that's done, you can get started. Now, on your own install, there is nothing like spam protection or to stop people uploading inappropriate resources. On Moodle.net, there is. So what we ask for is five good educational resources, and you click a button saying approve. That goes into our content system. Thanks, Anna. And we review those resources and we approve you. Once you're approved, it's public and you can then pub do more. You can actually do as many as you like first. It's at least five. So you do at least five resources and we approve you. And then it's available for everyone. Resource can be anything that's a MIME type. So it can be a PDF, an image, a video, question bank, a full Moodle course. It supports anything that is digital. Even canvas backup files, I was asked the other day. Yes, it can support that as well. MoodleNet needs a few pieces of information to, uh, to make the resource searchable. It needs a title, a description, a Creative Commons license. We're hoping that everything is just open, but that's fine. All Creative Commons licenses are supported. And if it's not a link, that is, because links can look after their own uh, licensing, but if it's an uploaded resource, that's a required thing for that resource. Now, we also ask for a subject. Now, that subject is based on an I said categorization. Thanks, Anna, for that. Um, and whether you would like it to be hidden or visible, the only reason for that is you might want to work on something, come back, update it, and then make it public. But that's also um, on there as well. You can also add it to a collection. So you can have a collection which might be a subject area. Um, and you can add more metadata if you wish to. We don't ask for this metadata as a required element purely because I've worked with a lot of faculty in my time, and I didn't want to put them off from sharing their resources. The longer you keep them on adding the resource and required fields, the fewer resources you end up with on the system. So we will talk about that, how we're going to encourage that uh, in the future later. And you can do a creation date. You'll see from the, the resource there, it has a license type, a type, which is a learning, uh, IEE learning object model, thanks Anna, um, as well as a standard, a, an educational level, a uh, creation date, and a language. Now, if you wanted to add any language into MoodleNet, you can. There are resources already there, and I think there might be some of these people in the room who've actually provided these resources, so thank you. I've screenshotted those to show people that we have things in Spanish and German and French and Arabic and Chinese already on Moodle.net. The interface is in English, but it doesn't mean you can't search in any language, and we will work on changing that with the community to as many languages as we can, like Moodle LMS does over time. Something to add about resources is that if you do have a Moodle account, but e a MoodleNet account, but even if you don't contribute anything, if you sign up for an account, it allows you to like resources and follow them. You'll see on the resources there, on the top right, that you have a like button, like a heart, and a bookmark button if you wanted to come back and look at something later. So that's embedded. Does this remind you of any social media system that you've used? Twitter? LinkedIn? This is what I was saying on the panel before, that we use our UX function, and Brew especially does a lot of research into, how can we be something that people already know how to use? So let's take, remove the blocks of having to learn to use the system. And that's what we end up with. Then we move on to collections. So these are intended to be curations. So collections are groups of resources, your resources or someone else's resources. So that allows you to put together a list in a collection for yourself and for others. Collections can then be followed, bookmarked, just like resources. So you end up with a list of curated collections, and these are then followable by other people. So if you are an expert, subject matter expert in your field, you have the ability then to follow this on MoodleNet. 
couple of collections there. Um, the left is a view from my profile, so you can see it as I would see it. And the right is as I would look at someone else's profile. In this case, it's Moodle Academy. Um, and I would just say that Moodle Academy have taken all the content from previous versions of MoodleNet that was relevant and made it available. So if you go to the Moodle Academy profile and you have contributed something in the past, it's there. As long as it fits to new, new versions of Moodle and it's a, a relevant MIME type, it's there. And thanks to Mary Cooch for doing all of that for us uh, at the time. <laughs> And finally, some of the content providers. And I know that someone is in the room who is, is pictured up here because I've seen him around. Um, some are educators, some are publishers, some are institutions, and as I say, some are in this room. So we're encouraging anyone with some good quality open educational resources to create a profile, share their work, and give back to society. Giving back is what we're all about. We're also forging content partnerships with others. Um, for, you'll see one there, bottom left, which is Frontiers for Young Minds who are an open science journal for children. And you can follow them, and you can basically send their resources to Moodle in a couple of clicks to your course, um, if that's relevant to you. We're trying to um, also include things like, you may have seen Lauren Goodman talking about a UNESCO course that they've done, uh, which is totally open. That's soon going to be available on MoodleNet, so you will be able to send it directly to your Moodle course, and it will unpack just as Lauren has designed it um, within MoodleNet as well. You know, these resources have the ability to reach potentially over 42 million Moodle courses in a couple of clicks. And part of the remit I was given when I started at Moodle was, that's great. We obviously want to integrate with Moodle, but we also want to give people the opportunity to use these things in any system, in any LMS. So you will always find a download to take the resource and put it into your system, or a link, or something else other than. But every resource has a Send to Moodle button, so you can bring it straight in. If you share a full Moodle course, in Moodle LMS, it actually starts to unpack it as a full course. So you will then have a complete course ready to go in Moodle from MoodleNet. So that's what we've released so far. So what are we working on now? And what's coming next? Essentially, these are the themes for what we're going to do. We have received feedback that installing MoodleNet is a little bit too technical for the ordinary person who wants to try it. And uh, the next presentation, I think, is going to highlight this uh, with the Moodle User Association of Japan. Um, so we are going to change that. And we have been designing um, a little bit like Moodle LMS has, a step-by-step -step guide, but non-technical. So that's one thing we are actually going to change. Uh, and we're going to, to provide a cost customization wizard. Thanks, Brew, for that. Um, and the opportunity to use it with Moodle Cloud. So that's what's coming next. You will be able to go to Moodle Cloud and get a trial, and it will be installed for you. There will be no technical requirement at all. And we're also going to completely review and improve our documentation for you if you want to install your own instance there, um, as Node.js and these environments are quite different to how you might have installed uh, Moodle LMS before. The largest part of what we're doing right now is to make extending things easily. We've been working with a few partners, um, thanks to Bern University, uh, Moodle User Associations of Italy and Japan. Um, and we've received lots of feedback from people like OER Global, um, librarians and standards. And this is why we've taken this approach in this kind, because the overriding feedback, and number one on our list was to create an environment to let you shape MoodleNet to fit your institution. I'll give you an example. If you use single sign-on, SSO, if you like your TLAs, um, in your institution, which I would guess 99.9% .9 of us do, then you need to be able to plug that into MoodleNet if you install it for yourself. So you're not working with multiple logins. At the moment, you have to create an account on MoodleNet. So what's coming in the next version is the ability to pull in and disable SSO uh, uh, extensions and other extensions. What we've done is we've stripped back all of the core things around MoodleNet to allow you to change them. And this is just, it isn't just authentication. This is standards as well. So thanks, Anna, again. We, we recognize that we made some assumptions about ISED categories and about IEE learning object models when we were looking at how do we standardize our resources, and that that may not be relevant to your institution. Therefore, you will be able to add your own standards into here. 
Creative Commons may also not be the right licensing standard for you. So we are going to, you have to turn that off and put your own licensing model in if, the, if you deem fit. Okay. So, next, we're committed to the developers and watch Moodle Academy. We're going to be announcing very soon a developer webinar, developer course, and documentation for MoodleNet, just like LMS. So you'll be able to follow through and it will guide you in developing whatever you need for MoodleNet. Finally, coming up is a better integration with LMS. Now, some of you may have heard Barry talk yesterday about LMS 4.1 and what's coming and a better integration with MoodleNet. They called it a stretch goal. Um, we agree that it is a stretch goal, it's a lot of work, and that's why this title says MoodleNet 3.x and Moodle LMS 4. Point question mark, because we hope it's going to be in 4.1. And the, what this will do is allow you within your Moodle course to share directly back to a MoodleNet. And I say a MoodleNet because you can share it to Moodle.net, which is our service, or you can share it to your local instance. Now, this is quite powerful. I mean, we've been working with some partners here who are working with let's say academies who have 30 different institutions with 30 different LMSs, but are required to standardize on certain templates and courses. Well, a local installation of MoodleNet allows you to design your template, design your course, share it to your local MoodleNet, and every institution can then push it back as a standardized course into their Moodle. And that's why we're doing that one. You could, of course, just share a course but imagine being able to share resources and standardize courses and templates beyond your own LMS. Depends who has access to your local MoodleNet. So what's coming later? Well, the first thing is we're going to make finding easier. Easy, hopefully, but easier certainly on our radar. So we need to work on the quality aspect of what's relevant to the user and bring that to the top of the list. As the number of resources grows, as we move past 100,000, 500,000 resources on MoodleNet, how do we get those things in front of you correctly? Well, the current MoodleNet search engine works on keywords on the metadata that's in the resource. Um, but you can't filter that. You, for example, you can't filter that by educational level. So we're firstly going to bring in those filters. So you can filter on any metadata there at all. And as the MoodleNet content grows, we're going to get smarter in how we float these to the top of the, uh, top of the list. We do this currently by using a system of kudos. So every resource that you like is awarded one kudo right now. So the more kudos, if someone then searches popularity in the filter, it rises to the top of the list because it's the most popular resource for that search. Now, that's a good start, but it's certainly not um, immune from being gamed, we call it being gamed, so you get all your colleagues to say what a great resource you've got, and there you are, top of the list. So, thanks to Burn University, who we, we work with, we have seen them design a full gamification system for MoodleNet, which involves all sorts of activities, just to give you an example of a few. For example, if you upload a resource and you do the metadata correctly and it meets quality standards, you gain a kudo. If you then use that resource in a Moodle course, you gain one. And that is itemized at almost every level. It's a quite a comprehensive technical system of how do we award achievements in MoodleNet. Those achievements will then translate into Digicomp Edu badges, which then means it plugs into your continuing professional development system for your teachers as well. Now this will probably be an extension. So it won't be on the core MoodleNet, but you'll be able to add it in as you wish, as you move forward. So thanks to Burn for that. Um, that's one of the themes for the upcoming release. And the big one that people talk about, we talked about it for a long time, and we are determined to get this working next, is federation. Now federation, if you don't know, is the ability to connect your MoodleNet to our MoodleNet to other MoodleNets. We've had the requirement, obviously, to connect to us. So if you have an open education policy and all your resources in your MoodleNet are open, you'll be able to link to Moodle.net, making that open to the world. But also, if someone searches your MoodleNet, there'll be an option to bring in the content that we list. So we end up sharing. 
And what happens as we add more and more servers into this federated network is we develop our ecosystem of open education resources. So that's the big idea here, is to get that working. We have had the requirement from some partners to say, well, you know, we want to be open to a certain degree, but we don't want to be totally open. So we want to ring fence our resources so it's only usable by these 50 universities. So we're also building into the design of that, the ability to connect to other Moodle nets, but not to us. So you can ring fence your things. Obviously, we'd like everything to be open. That's our ultimate goal. Sustainable development goal number four for UNESCO, and that's why MoodleNet is there. Finally, I think Don alluded to this in the panel discussion. We have this idea that, and we've been talking with the LMS platform team, with Barry's team, how do we embed this into Moodle LMS? So how do we make it smart? You don't have to leave the LMS. When you create your course, it is no longer a blank page. It is smart enough to look at maybe what you've done in the past in other courses on that Moodle LMS installation. And you can use search routines as well to pull up more information, but to get you really specific and helpful information to start populating your course from the front page. And that will come either from your local MoodleNet and its federation or the world. That is totally your choice. And of course, if you scan this QR code, this goes to our backlog. So every feature request we've received, we look at them every quarter to say, what are we going to do next? We are starting a new pro product discovery process, so we will engage much more with the community in terms of what's important to you. And you can vote, you can add suggestions there, and we will look at them. A lot of them already exist. There's just a little word cloud there of some of them. But, you know, for example, there's one, I want to send a collection of resources to Moodle as a course. So I want to curate my entire list and then just send it as a course to Moodle LMS. That's becoming a popular one. You can go and vote for it right now on, on, there, on that system. Our Q, our QR, that's our tracker. If, if you know that term, you know we've got our own tracker there. And you'll see it on the product ideas board as well. But this is where we want to know from you um, what you need. How can you get involved? Well, this QR code takes you to our community. Um, if you go there, you can engage directly with the team. We're all in that, uh, that community there. And you can talk to us. You'll see my name and a lot of responses there um, from people asking questions. If you're an educator, get an account on Moodle.net. Share your open resources, give back to society, curate subjects, collections on any subject, and allow people to follow that. Administrators, install your own MoodleNet and let it serve your content to your institution and its network. We will even help with this. So if you are, have 100,000 resources and just don't know how to get started, we have a few that we will help with as a case study to get you going. So come and see me, come and see a member of the team uh, to talk about that afterwards. And finally, we're all obviously always looking for funding and fund development there to, uh, to sponsor certain things. We already have sponsors for Google Single Sign-On, for example. But we'd like to have sponsors for things that you need as well. So if you want a SAML integration, or we have a university who wants to make an extension for MoodleNet, which makes it look like LinkedIn, those sorts of things. Um, we're looking for help with those things as well. That's it. If you have any questions, we're all here and we're happy to talk to you. Thanks very much. Hi, Paul. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, yesterday we were talking about uh, well, uh, sharing resources, share, uh, sharing OERs and stuff. So MoodleNet, of course, was there. But one of the main worries that we had with um, MoodleNet or other similar services is always trust, trust in the content because of the quality, because if anybody can upload anything, mm -hmm. uh, it's really difficult to, to find yep. real quality content. So I was happy to hear about that new improvement in, in version three with the gamification and the... Um, and the badges and stuff, but is there any further plans on how to improve the tr trust in the contents? Like, I don't know, anything? Well, it comes from the community at the end of the day. It's, uh, 
the more interactions we get in terms of liking and sharing, the more we know about that resource and if it is quality. Um, it, if it's not quality, it won't be used as much yeah. and it will be ignored, essentially, when you have a lot. So that's the thing. Yes, do you want to add something? Yeah. So yeah. maybe, like, I don't know, uh, getting feedback from the instances of LMS that uses it or something like that? Exactly, yeah. yes. Yeah. We, we are, we're not tracking that yet, but we do need to do more analytics to make that smarter. Yes, that's the only way we can do it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, One more. I, I didn't get if the federation is already a functionality or if it is planned for version 3 or beyond. It's, beyond, it's version 3. Um, probably um, we, we're starting to design it now. So we're talking to people right now. And in the next product discovery phase, which is the end of October, we'll be inviting people to talk to us about that. Yeah. And have you a release schedule on your website like Moodle? I would love to say yes, but I don't. Not yet. No. Yeah, thanks very, thanks very much. Um, this looks really great and will be really useful for us on Atingi. Um, I also spoke to Brew about this, but still I'd like to mention that um, for us and somebody who's been working in the OER environment for a long time, versioning would be very interesting. So the point that somebody takes a course, develops it further or adapts it, and we can see that. And the second point is you mentioned already this exciting thing that you put something on Moodle.net and it by, might be used by thousands of other learners somewhere. For many of us, um, that would help also motivating people to use this service. So are these two things thought about on your roadmap? Absolutely, and I think one of those exists in the, in the tracker, but if you'd like to add one that said um, around the encouraging users to do this, then yes, we'll absolutely consider that. Okay, so in terms of sustainability, obviously the ultimate form of sustainability is cash going to the people building the content. Um, I've been involved in some micropayment stuff and all that kind of thing. Have you got any plans? How, how do you see that playing out? Well, cash going to the end user, I think, is not in the philosophy of what MoodleNet was developed for. You know, it was for the giving back to society, the total open education idea. Um, but essentially, it's that encouragement, isn't it? I mean, how do you get good content onto MoodleNet? And we have had that discussion. You know, do we get to the point where if there isn't something you can use, do we hand people off to a service or do we pay faculty to add their content or do we make an arrangement with a, an institution to add their content in a certain area? The problem with that is that there's no guarantees that then it will be used out there and, and it fits into the gamification system. You know, we, we need to reward that based on it being used. So maybe there is a discussion to have about that, but it's certainly not in the, in the ethos. This is all about openness and giving back. Okay. Do we have time?